Hi, I'm Brian Collin with Learn My Test. Remember, the best way to study is to take practice tests. If you don't have practice tests, make them on LearnMyTest.com. That's www.LearnMyTest.com. Create an account for free. To get practice tests from the content in this video and our other videos, add me as a study buddy on Learn My Test, Brian Collin, BG Collin at gmail.com, and I'll send you uh, these tests. Also, we'll be posting new videos every other week. So if you like this video, please subscribe here so you can stay updated on the latest. Today's topic is the theory of attachment. Attachment theory is the study of how your relationships with your parents or primary caregivers starting in infancy lay the foundation for your future relationships in adulthood. Zoologist Conrad Lorenz watched baby geese hatch from their shells. He was the first face that the goose saw once they hatched from their shell. Conrad realized that after the geese hatched, they would follow him wherever he went. The geese were wired to believe whatever they saw when they hatched was their mother. Conrad Lorenz realized the time geese hatch is an important period in development for them because they realize who their mother is. So he defined a sensitive period as, an, as any period in development where you are wired to learn something or you're sensitive to something. John Bowlby adapted Lorenz's work to his own, coming up with a theory for the stages of human interactions with their parents or their primary caregivers. Stage one is the pre-attachment stage and usually occurs from zero to two months, and it's where the infant is unable to tell the difference between his or her mother and other humans that he or she interacts with. Stage two is attachment in the making and usually occurs between two and six months. It's when the infant is able to recognize who his or her parents are, but does not get upset or distressed when they are gone. Stage three is clear cut attachment, which usually occurs between six months and four years. The child finally in this stage develops separation anxiety or gets visibly upset when the mother or attachment figure leaves. The fourth and final stage of Bowlby's theory is called a goal-corrected partnership and usually lasts from three to four years and onward. The child finally understands that the parents will leave and come back, and so the child doesn't get as upset when parents leave. Mary Ainsworth came up with a brilliant study idea called the Strange Situation Experiment that extended the work of John Bowlby. The first step of Ainsworth's study is that the researcher would introduce the parent and child to a playroom where they would be spending most of the study. The child's interactions with the parent will be, are being observed by the researchers throughout the duration of the study. Step two is the parent will go ahead and sit down and then the child will play with toys. And the researchers are looking for how far away or how close the child goes in reference to the mother. If the child stays around where the mother is, this is called establishing her as a secure base. Step three, the stranger comes in, sits down, and starts talking to the parent. And now they're looking at how the child is going to react to the stranger coming in the room. Is the child going to not mind the stranger? Is the child going to get scared and move closer to the mother? How is the child going to react? Episode four, the mother leaves the room and leaves the child alone with the stranger. And so now we're looking at, does the child get distressed and show separation anxiety when the mother leaves the room? So in step five, the stranger leaves the room and then mom comes back in the room. And so now the researchers are looking for the child's reaction to the mother. For example, it, does the child not care or is the child angry with the mother for leaving or is the child just happy to see their mother? Step six is when the parent leaves the room and then the child is left all alone. And so what the researchers are looking for here is, again, separation anxiety. So does the child look, is, does the child start crying and get really distressed or does he not really care when the mother leaves? 
Step seven, the stranger re-enters and tries to comfort the child. And what the researchers are really looking here is to see if the child is able to be soothed by a stranger. In step eight, the parent returns to the room and tries to comfort the child and introduces some toys. And what they're really lo- what the researchers are looking for is really um, how the child reacts to the reunion with the parent. Is the child getting angry at the parent for leaving, or is he happy to see the mother? Ainsworth identified four attachment styles, but before we get into those, I want you to think about if you were distressed when you had to leave your mother or father, did you experience separation anxiety? How are you towards strangers? Are you generally friendly or not as friendly? Um, When your parents left, were you happy to see them or not as happy to see them? Did you feel more comfortable exploring your surroundings or did you feel like your parents needed to be with you a lot of the time as a child? Um, So think about those questions, um, and then we're going to go forward and discuss the four different attachment patterns that Ainsworth observed in her research. The first style of attachment is called secure attachment. And so secure attachment children are definitely distressed when the mother leaves the room. um, And when the stranger comes in, they're definitely avoidant of the stranger, or they avoid the stranger unless the mother's in the room, and then if the mother's in the room, they're friendly. They're generally happy when the mother comes back into the room, and when they're in the room with the mother, they generally feel free to explore the room, but they always glance back to see where the mother is. They're definitely attentive where the mother is in the room. About 70% of children are securely attached. If you think about the attachment bonds you have with friends or family, you know, it's normal to get sad and and healthy to get sad when they leave. And it's also normal to feel really, really happy when you get to see them again and you haven't seen them in a while. It's normal and healthy to want to meet new people while you're with friends and people that you have an attachment with. It's a lot harder to meet strangers by yourself. And so this is completely normal. And so this is why secure attachment is the most common and also the healthiest, according to to psychological research. The next attachment pattern is called resistant or anxious ambivalent. These children experience intense distress when the mother leaves the room, even more so than secure attached. And the infant is generally afraid of the stranger. And when the mother returns in the room, the child is generally upset at the mother for leaving her or him. Children with resistant or anxious ambivalent attachment uh, generally have trouble um, exploring the room. They generally stay really close to the mother. About 15% of children have anxious ambivalent attachment, and it's been associated with child abuse and is generally less adaptive than secure attachment. Avoidant attachment pattern usually occurs in 15% of children, and avoidant attachment is the child doesn't really get separation anxiety when the mother leaves and is okay with the stranger, plays normally with the stranger, um, and shows interest, shows little interest in the mother when she returns in the room. Children with avoidant attachment patterns may be more likely to engage in antisocial behavior and also have... Um, you know, difficulty forming close relationships with others. So disorganized attachment is commonly seen when there's some sort of child abuse going on. And so what happens is the child is actually relieved when the mother um, leaves because the mother may be abusive and is warm and happy um, to see the stranger and even happier to see the stranger than the mother. Psychologists in some cases will look for disorganized attachment patterns among the children to help identify if there's any child abuse going on. Now may be a good time to call your parents and ask what your attachment pattern was as a child. Thank you for watching. Remember to sign up for Learn My Test and create your own practice test to study, or if you need practice tests on any of this content or any of our other video content on our YouTube channel, add me as a study buddy on Learn My Test. That's bgcolin at gmail.com. Also, we will be posting new psychology videos like this every week. So if you like this video, please subscribe by clicking the Learn My Test icon below um, to get updated on our latest video content. Thank you so much for watching.